Hi, superstars. It's time for English. We are on Unit 6, Week 1. We're going to be talking about weather for all seasons. What is the weather generally like during each of the four seasons? Remember, we have winter. Then comes spring. Then we have summer. And the last one is fall. Those are our four seasons. And the weather is different in each one of those seasons. What are some things that you do outdoors during each of these seasons? Do you dress differently for the weather? Changes in the weather and the seasons affect both the people and our environment. Let's read this song. We're going to read the lyrics. It says, what shall we do on a rainy day? What shall we do on a rainy day? Rainy day, rainy day. What shall we do on a rainy day when we can't go out to play? So our big idea this week is how do weather and seasons affect us? So remember, we're talking about the four seasons. And our essential question is how are the seasons different? Seasons change. We have four seasons in the year. So there's always a new season. When it's winter, it's generally cold. When spring comes along, it starts warming up. The season changes. And then after spring comes summer. That's another season. And it's hot during the summer or warmer, depends where you live. And then comes fall when it starts cooling down again. And seasons come in a pattern. So you have winter, spring, summer, and fall. And they always come around in that same pattern. Now look at this picture. It shows children having fun in winter. Is winter cold? Yes, it is. Look how the kids are dressed. They're dressed for the season of winter. They're wearing coats. They're playing outside, but the weather is cold. Let's watch a video that talks about the seasons. How are the seasons different? The four seasons are different in many ways. In winter, bundle up in your coat, hat, and gloves. In some places, you might slide down a snowy hill. Spring brings rain. Rain helps the flowers to grow. Hide under an umbrella and watch. The summer sun is hot. Dance around a sprinkler to stay cool. The air turns cooler in the fall. Play in the leaves that drop from the trees. We can have fun in every season. Let's go over some words to know. These are vocabulary words that we should understand because you're going to hear them throughout this unit. And the first one is weather. Can you say weather? Weather. Here's an example. The weather today is cool and breezy. Weather is what is happening outside, such as rain, snow, or hot or cold air. Weather. Our next vocabulary word is seasons. Can you see seasons? The seasons are the four parts of the year. Seasons. 
two of the seasons are fall and spring. Seasons. Our next word is spot. Can you say spot? It's easy to spot a giraffe in the zoo because it's so tall. Spot. When you spot something, you notice it or find it. Spot. Active. Can you say active? An active person is someone who is busy and moves around a lot. Active. The active child played with every toy in the room. Active. Migrate. Migrate. The birds migrate south to Florida every winter. Migrate. To migrate means to move from one place to another, usually to a place that is warmer or colder. Migrate. It means to move from one place to another, usually to a place that is warmer or colder. Migrate. Is. That's a high frequency word. Is. Say is. Fall is a beautiful season. Is. Can you spell is with me? I S. Is. Little. Another high frequency word. Can you say little? The little bugs are cute. Little. Little. Let's spell the word little. L I T T L E. Little. Good job, superstars. Try to Go over those vocabulary words so that you understand them. We're going to read a story about a boy who is excited about summer. How do you think he knows that summer is coming? It's important to look for details in the text and the illustrations. Also, it's good to find details about the sequence or the order of events in which things happen. So you can use the words and the pictures in a story to form pictures in your mind of what's happening. Look at the title of this book. Mama, is it summer yet? The title of this book is a question. Now, this story is a fiction story. A fiction story is made up. The stories have characters, people, or animals who aren't real. They also have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Now, remember, sentences always begin with a capital letter and they always end in punctuation, some form of punctuation. It can be a period, an exclamation mark, or a question mark. All right, let's start our story. Mama, is it summer yet? And the author is Nikki McClure. Remember, the author is the person who writes the story. All right, let's listen. For my mother, N.M. Thank you to Susan Van Meter and Georgia Munger for their help with finding the right words and pictures. Mama, Is It Summer Yet? by Nikki McClure. Mama, Is It Summer Yet? All right, let's look at this sentence. 
What is the first letter of this sentence? It's a capital M. What's the ending punctuation? What is it? It is a question mark. All right. Let's continue. Not yet, my little one, but the buds are swelling. Soon new leaves will unfold. So I read earlier that the boy's asking his mother if it's summer, and I see that they're wearing scarves, hats, and gloves. I think it's winter. So it doesn't look like summer yet. Mama, is it summer yet? Hmm, I'm looking at the pages and I see bare trees, mittens, hats, coats, broken branches. I can make a picture in my mind of people cleaning up after a long winter. This helps me to understand that winter is over, but summer hasn't started yet. Not yet, my little one, but the squirrel is building her nest. Soon her babies will be born. All right, the squirrel is building a nest. A nest is an animal home made of twigs and leaves. Mama, is it summer yet? Not yet, my little one, but the earth is soft. Soon the seeds will sprout and root. Okay, remember, the events in this story take place in a certain order. What's happening in the story now? The earth is getting soft and the seeds are sprouting. When things sprout, that means they're beginning to grow. Mama, is it summer yet? How's the boy helping his mother? And how do you know? Well, the boy's helping his mother hammer a nail. And I can see his hand on the hammer, right? You just look at the illustration. That's why we pay attention to illustrations and also the words. They give us clues. Mama. Not yet, my little one. But the swallows are singing. Soon warmer winds will blow. So the text tells about swallows singing. And the lines behind the birds show that they're flying. So if I close my eyes and I picture the swallows flying through the air, they go in circles. They fly up quickly. So this helps me understand what the swallows are doing. Mama, is it summer yet? Hmm, what details do you see in the illustration that tell you what the boy and his mother might do next? Well, I think they might be going near mud or water because they're putting on rain boots. Not yet, my little one. But the ducklings are following their mother. Soon they will grow big and bold. All right, can you picture in your mind the little ducklings following the mother duck? What else can you picture in your mind? When they say ducklings, they're talking about baby ducks. Mama, is it summer yet? Well, I see the boy and his mother with books and a blanket. So in my mind, I can picture them curled up and reading together. I imagine that they're outside because the weather is getting warmer. Not yet, my little one, but the trees are blossoming. 
Soon tiny apples will appear. So on the page before, the boy asked if it's summer yet. And on this page, I read that it's not summer. But now the trees are blossoming. Mama, is it summer now? Hmm, so he, he's asking his mom, is it summer yet? So if I close my eyes, I can visualize a summer day. You can see yourself wearing summer clothes. You can hear bugs making noises. You can feel the hot sun. So if you close your eyes, try to imagine what a summer day feels like. Yes. Oh, yes, my little one. The honeybees are in the flowers. The sun is warm on your round belly. The berries are juicy and sweet. So when I see the word honeybees, I can see two words, honey and bees. I know that honey is sweet and it's a sticky liquid. And I know that bees are insects. Honeybees must be bees that make honey. And when we say something's juicy, that means it's full of juice. My little one, it is summer now. So when did summer happen in this story? It happened at the end, right? So now it's summer and they're enjoying their time outside. Let's listen to a tour of the seasons. A tour of the seasons. What are the seasons and how are they different? The cold weather has come. A dry breeze shakes the bare branches. Snow is falling again and the park is packed. Children ride down the hill on their sleds. A group of friends builds a snowman. There are only a few birds in the trees. Icicles hang from rooftops. Can you guess which of the seasons has arrived? The four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and autumn, are very different from one another. The weather gets warm or cool, rainy or dry. Animals and plants change and grow. People change their activities, their habits, and even the foods they eat. The seasons are not exactly the same in every part of the country, but their names are always the same. Every season brings some kind of change. It has been a long winter. One morning you leave for school and notice that the air feels warmer. You see the green tips of leaves poking through the melting snow. Spring has arrived. In a few more weeks, animals start to return home. Squirrels chase each other across the yard. The trees grow brown and green buds. You spot a robin hopping along in search of worms. It can rain a lot during spring. The drops make plink-plonk sounds on the roof and windows. Then the sun comes out and you can finally go outside without a heavy jacket. At the park, the snow has given way to green fields and flowering trees. Spring sports have begun. Crack goes a player's bat as it hits a baseball. Families spread out picnics across the new grass. Spring is also the time for planting. People plant their gardens. Farmers plant seeds to grow vegetables, grains, and other crops. New life is all around. For many people, summer means fun. School ends and families spend their days outside. The hotter it gets, the more people want to spend time near the water. Beaches and swimming pools fill up and boats dot lakes and oceans. Tents pop up at camping grounds, and you can smell delicious food cooking on grills. Every now and then, clouds roll in. Thunder rumbles and crashes, and lightning shoots across the sky. Rain sends people running for cover. 
and then ends as suddenly as it began. Summer is also the season of insects. Flies, bees, and mosquitoes buzz back and forth. Crickets chirp throughout the evening, and active butterflies float from flower to flower. In many parts of the country, plants are growing lush and thick. Corn grows past our heads, and tomatoes ripen on the vine. It is a time for fresh vegetables, juicy slices of watermelon, and cool lemonade. Finally, we come to the fourth season, autumn. Have you ever picked apples at an orchard? Do you like the smell of pumpkin pie cooking in the oven? Have you ever jumped into a soft pile of leaves? These are some special things about autumn. In autumn, the weather can't make up its mind. Some days still feel like summer. On other days, we must bundle up in a warm sweater or a jacket. But the animals know exactly what to do. Most of the birds migrate to warmer places. The squirrels start searching for nuts to bury for the winter. The plants know what to do too. In many parts of the country, you can tell that it is autumn just by looking at the trees. Leaves turn from green to yellow, red, and orange. Then they fall off the trees and blow with the wind. In yards and parks, people rake the leaves together and leap into the piles. School starts again in autumn. We get ready for change. It's time to start the cycle of seasons all over again. So here, they're calling this season autumn, and that's correct. It's also referred to as fall. So fall and autumn are the same season. Let's listen to this short video. It's going to talk about the letter B and how to write it. Let's listen. Consonant B. The letter B stands for the B sound you hear at the beginning of bat. You can also hear the b sound at the beginning of bed and at the end of cab. This is an uppercase B. This is a lowercase B. This is how to write the uppercase letter B. Straight down, go back to the top, around and in, around and in. This is how to write the lowercase letter B. Straight down, go to the dotted line, around all the way. It's your turn. Now we're going to listen to a short video about the letter L. Consonant L. The letter L stands for the L sound you hear at the beginning of lemon. Two other words that begin with the letter L are lip and lock. This is an uppercase L. This is a lowercase L. This is how to write the uppercase letter L. Straight down, straight across the bottom line. This is how to write the lowercase letter L. Straight down. It's your turn.
All right, practice writing uppercase and lowercase L and B. Let's open up our close reading companion to page 67. We're going to talk about the story we just read. Mama, is it summer yet? Make sure your name and date is at the top of each page. It asks, look, do the words and pictures show what season it is? Draw or list clues. So let's go back to our story and look at a picture. Let's look at this picture in the story. What do you see? I see blooms, which are the flowers on the trees. They're blooming. What are the mom and young boy wearing? They're wearing short sleeved shirts. It looks like they don't have warm clothes on. So that must mean that it's, it's getting warmer outside. So they don't need to bundle up in jackets, right? Are they wearing shoes on their feet? Oh, it looks like they took their shoes off. So they have bare feet and they're lying on a blanket outside. So let's go back to page 61. So in this box on page 61, it says, how do the words and pictures show what season it is? Draw, or you can list the clue. So what did we see in that picture? So you can draw, if you would like, you can draw the blooms or you can list them. So you can either write them or draw them. So I will list them for you and you have the choice of drawing them if you prefer. So you can draw or list. And I'm going to write blooms. That was one thing we saw in the pictures. What else did we see? We saw short sleeved clothes. What else? Were they wearing shoes on their feet? No, we saw bare feet. That means they had no shoes on. And what were they doing? They were lying on a blanket. You can draw this, remember, or you can mark, write it down. And they were outside. So they were lying on the blanket outside. Down here, we're going to complete this sentence. It says, when trees bloom, when do trees bloom? What season? When trees bloom, it is, do you remember what season it is? It is springtime. Make sure you put your period at the end. All right, let's turn our page over. We are on page 62 now of our close reading companion. Which words help you know what summer is like? Draw it. So let's go back to our story so we can find some clues. Let's listen to this page again. Yeah, yes. Oh, yes, my little one. The honeybees are in the flowers. The sun is warm on your round belly. The berries are juicy and sweet. All right, so what did you hear? that reminds you of summer? Well, we heard honeybees, right? What else? Flowers, because flowers are blooming or they're already bloomed in summer. What else? Sun, because it's sunny and warm in the summertime. And what else? 
reminds you of summer. Berries. Let's go back to our close reading companion. So on page 62, it asks you to draw the words that help you know what summer is like. So you're going to draw, I'm going to write those words so that you can remember them. Remember, we heard the words, let me write it here, bees. Do you remember what else we heard? Flowers, so you're gonna draw these, okay? What else? Sun. And berries. So draw those in this square. And then down here, it says summer is. So is summer cold? No, summer is what? Summer is warm. So I want you to write the word warm in your beautiful handwriting and make sure you put a period at the end. You're completing the sentence. Summer is warm. Okay. Can't wait to see your drawings. We are going to read some poems. Now, good readers sometimes use the text and the illustrations to make pictures in their mind of what's happening in a story or a poem. Look at this picture here on page 34. What pictures in your head do you have about what you would be doing on a day like the one in this picture? Would you maybe be making a snowman or going on a sled? Many poems use words that rhyme. Rhyming words have the same ending sounds. Let's look at a different poem. Let's look at this poem. It says, honey, I love, right here. Honey, I love, and it's on page 40, okay? So some of the rhyming words in this poem would be, cool and pool, cool and pool. They have the same ending sounds. So try to listen for those rhyming words as we're reading these poems. Let's look at this poem here. It's called Covers. Glass covers windows to keep the cold away. Clouds cover the sky to make a rainy day. Nighttime covers all the things that creep. Blankets cover me when I'm asleep. So what are the rhyming words? Away and day. They have the same ending sounds. What kinds of covers does this poet mention glass because glass covers the windows right clouds cover the sky night or nighttime covers all the things that creep and blankets is another type of cover right that covers me when I'm asleep. Let's read this poem. It is called New Snow. The new, new snow is sparkling in the sun. Wherever I go in the new, new snow, I am the very first one. What words rhymed? All right, let's read this again here. It says, wherever I go in the new, new snow, do you hear the rhyming words? Go 
and snow. They have the same sounding, the same ending sound. Go and snow. So what is the opposite of new? It says, wherever I go in the new, new snow. What's the opposite of new? Old, right? Old is the opposite of new. Let's read this poem, Rain Song. Spring rain is pink rain for petals sweet and fair. Summer rain is rainbow rain with colors everywhere. The rain of fall is brown rain with leaves that whirl and blow. And the winter rain is white rain, but we call it snow. What season is mentioned first in this poem? Spring. They mention spring first. Which season comes after the fall? They mention spring. They mention summer. They mention fall. So what comes after fall? Winter. Let's read. Honey, I love. The day is hot and icky, and the sun sticks to my skin. Mr. Davis turns the hose on. Everybody jumps right in. The water stings my stomach, and I feel so nice and cool. Honey, let me tell you that I love a flying pool. I love to feel a flying pool. Which words help us understand what the poet enjoys in the summer? Well, the hose with the water, nice, cool, and water. What activity does the poet love? Cooling off in the sprinkler or flying pool. They're calling it a flying pool because the water is flying everywhere. Let's open up our close reading companion to page 63. Oops, okay, we're right. Sorry about that. Okay, here we are, it's page 63. Honey, I love. Make sure your name, first and last name is written and the date at the top of the page. So here it says, find clues. What words help tell what the poet loves about summer? Write the words and draw a picture. So right here, you're gonna write the words and over here, you're going to draw a picture. So remember, we spoke about those words that helped us understand what he loves about summer. So you're going to write over here, we said pose. What else did we say? Do you remember? Nice. Cool. And water. So write these words in your best handwriting. And then over here, you are going to draw a picture. So you can go back and you can look at the poem, draw a picture. Down here it says, the poet loves what? What did the poet love? The Flying, remember, flying what? Pool, right? Which is also the sprinklers. So it's pretty much the same thing. So he loved the sprinklers. 
or the flying pool and make sure you put your punctuation mark at the end. Let's turn to page 64, right here. Make sure you have your name and date at the top. And up here it says, what clues in the art? Let you know what season it is. Draw or write the clues. So we're looking for clues in this picture. What do you see? What clues in this art let you know what season it is? Well, there's snow on the ground. That's a clue. What else? Do you see a pond? It looks frozen because they're ice skating on it. So there's a frozen pond and there's snow on the ground. So you can draw the snow, a picture with snow and a frozen pond, or you can write that down. So you can either write, I will help you here, write or draw. So the first thing we said was snow. It's the first clue that we saw. Snow on the ground. And a frozen pond. You can do both. You can write it and draw it if you would like. Now down here, it says, I know the season is, what is the season and how do you know that? Is it summer? No, is it fall? Mm -mm. I know the season is what? Winter, because, why? Because, I see, what do you see in this picture? Snow, very good. So write that. All right, superstars, you're doing a wonderful job. Until next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.